War Room Nation sports fans, welcome to Field Vision, brought to you by War Room Sports in conjunction with the Sports Kings. I'm your host this evening, Jimmy, at JW the Blueprint. You can at me, ladies. I'm JW the Blueprint on Twitter, MySpace, Farmers Only, you know, Christian Mingle. Anyway, <laughs> at the round table, I got my partner, Dev. Dev, what's going on? What up, man? The Eagles garbage, but the Sixers going 82 and 0. Take that, Miami Heat. Yeah. Wow. From the Sports Kings, we got Frank. Frank, what's going on? Not much. Can we hold on a sec? I'm still watching Calvin Johnson run against the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's still yeah, running. Let's talk about Calvin do. Johnson. Before we do, we also I think somebody's about to catch him though. Have our guest back this week from Heavy in the Game Sports, Fred Perdue, Miami Miami Hurricanes fan. You know, looking forward to the game this week. Yeah, let's see if you'll be doing that next week after they play Florida State. Yeah, it's going to be more like this. It's going to be more like this after. <laughs> Gentlemen, before we jump into tonight's topics, Calvin Johnson, yo, what do you have to say about his performance this past Sunday? Um, first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and say I've never seen anything like that before because I don't think I saw the game when Flipper Anderson had more yards than that. Um, 329 yards. I, First of all, why why were the Cowboys not doubling him? Like, yo, they did a lot of plays. It didn't matter. No, but they 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 really did. They left dude out there on the island, and he got torched. He he's talking about how it's a learning experience. It's nothing bad for his confidence. It's going to help him out in the long run. What you learn from that? <laughs> learn how to take pain, I guess. <laughs> learn how to call somebody. Learn how to call somebody daddy. That's what he learned. <laughs> Hold on, though. My thing is this: though. I've never seen anybody get knocked down to one yard line so many times, too. What's up with that, y'all? Yeah, yo, Calvin, you need to fix that. My fantasy team needs you to fix that. Dude. This jump in the end zone, though. Like, what is that, yeah. Frank? What do you think about the performance, Frank? Um, the only thing I really have to say about the performance is that, like I just said, Calvin Johnson's on my fantasy team, and I literally thought it was just incorrect when I looked at my phone and it said 14 receptions for 329 yards. I, I, I double-checked, like, I checked, <laughs> like, seven different outlets, like, I checked ESPN, Yahoo, I was like, this can't be real, and then I watched the highlights, and I was just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. He's a beast. Imagine, imagine if he had gotten you those touchdowns. Jeez. Yeah, I know. Oh Tell God. me. What. I still won, though. They got no, knocked out the one like four times, though. I've never seen that before. Hey, Fred, what did you think when you saw Calvin Johnson do what he did? I just want to know who decided to put a robot in a video, in, in a real-life <laughs> football game, because that guy's not human. Yeah. Three, yeah. Th double coverage, triple coverage. They he doesn't him. have to be open. <laughs> He's just not it open. Him. It's, it's, mm -hmm. the, it's the, the one thing that most coaches say. Just throw it up to him. Well, usually you don't do that to every receiver. Well, if I was if I was the uh, commissioner, I test I test players like him after each game. I anyway. make a penalty to throw it to him. <laughs> Bro, and and he he's playing on a bad knee. I mean, he just missed time yeah. a few weeks ago. It should be an NFL rule that you can only throw to him every five times a game. <laughs> you can't even do that on Madden, like on rookie mode. You, know, limit you really can't. You really can't. All right, well, we're here. Um, it's the midseason, right? So what we want to do is we want to give away some midseason awards. Um, as we always say, this is subject to change. It's may change at the end of the season. Anything could happen. But as of right now, we're going to give away our awards to see, you know, who we feel is having a great season. So first thing I want to do is go through uh, and see who everyone has as the coach of the year. This is probably going to be unanimous. We didn't talk about this, but I can't see anybody else getting this right now. So, Dev. Got to go with, with Big Red and KC, uh, undefeated so far. I mean, we know that the schedule wasn't that tough, but they were a 2-14 team last year. So, you know, people weren't looking at them as being that tough either. He's taken that talent, and he's molded it. I'm going to go with Big Red, Fat Andy right now. All right, Frank, who's your coach of the year? Uh, I'm going to go with Tom Cop. No, I'm not. I'm going to go with Andy Reid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andy Reid. Okay, Fred. It's not really much discussion. It really is. Fred, who's your coach of the year? I wanted to say Sean Payton because this team was so bad defensively last I mean, year. He's probably going to be number yeah. two. Sean, that's, that was but, my team to say, actually. But, but, <laughs> Andy Reid, man. Come on, the Chiefs were terrible last year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're undefeated. I, I also on. have Andy Reid as being the coach of the year. I also picked Andy Reid before the season started. Not that I thought they would be this good, but I thought if they won five to seven games, then he would probably win it. They've already won seven games. Like, <laughs> Yo, but I mean, they, for real, they, though, won, they... they won two games. People are forgetting they only won two games last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can they actually play a real-life NFL quarterback, though? <laughs> I mean, I mean listen, nice. you, only, you only can play who's in front of you. 
That's I grew true. up. I grew up watching the 49ers play cupcake schedules all season long, and then turn it up in the playoffs. So, My not saying that Chiefs are going to do the same. Schedule eight times a year. <laughs> yeah. You know, but anyway, <laughs> let's jump right to the next one. I figured that would be a unanimous decision. I don't know if this one will be comeback player of the year. I'll start this one off myself. Um, I have Philip Rivers as being the comeback player of the year, and the reason I'm choosing Philip Rivers is because. He went from top 10 to not mention at all, and he's right back in the top 10 again. I mean, yeah, I mean this ether season. injuries with Gates and what have you, but he's playing his best football. I mean, with his new coach, a former Broncos assistant, you would expect that, but you've got to give it up to Phillip Rivers and what he's doing this season. Yeah, um, he, he, he's showing that he's still mad at <laughs> Fred, who, Fred, who's your comeback player of the year? i got to give it to... Yeah, Phillip Rivers, man. You, we really are on the same page here. Phillip Rivers has <laughs> really been doing some things out there, throwing the football around, and he has some young guys around him. Antonio Gates isn't the same, and they don't really have a running game. So you got to give it to Phillip Rivers. He's really balling this year. Yeah, they might as well just put another receiver in the backfield at this point. Oh, they can't. they've had a running game the past two games. He's Ooh, Danny Woodhead. Yards. Danny <laughs> Woodhead's a receiver, so I mean, you might yeah. as well. <laughs> Look, Ryan Matthews has been over 100 yards the past two games. Frank. And, and they have Washington next, so he, he might do it again. Yeah, he might jump for 300 yards. Frank, who's your, who's your uh, comeback player of the year? I had trouble with this one. I don't think there's many candidates. Um, I went with Darrell Rivas. I didn't think of Phillip Rivers. So that, that one actually might be a better pick, but I went with Darrell Rivas. I thought even though he's on a terrible team, I think he's still – he's showing that he's he can still play. And uh, I to be honest, I just didn't see any other real good candidates. Yeah, I mean, considering he's on that team, he may not be eligible for no award because they are. <laughs> Dev, who's your play, uh, pick for comeback player of the year? You know what? Until this very second, I just realized how stupid I was. <laughs> I'm like a year behind. I swear to God, I was about to say Peyton Manning because he didn't play last <laughs> year. <laughs> Yo, he's, sitting, so, he's probably sitting here like, what the hell are these people doing picking Darrell Revis? I'm, I'm, sit, I'm sitting here like Jimmy's Jimmy. I was just going with it. He said, uh, this is not going to be unanimous. I'm like, the dude didn't play last year. <laughs> I'm tripping. I'm Basketball is yeah. on the mind right now. I've been trying to forget last year for several months now. Yeah, I just so can't. Never happened. Um, so up against the wall, against pressure, um, he's my fantasy quarterback, so I'm going to have to go ahead and go with uh, Phillip Rivers as well. Yeah, you um, traded for him. Yeah, like, yeah, I traded my favorite quarterback in the league for him, Andrew Luck. Um, Why would you do that, sir? <laughs> yo, I don't think Fred – is actually looking at the actual numbers in fantasy. <laughs> yeah, because Philip Rivers is not producing Andrew the, the Luck. People. This is not about wins and losses. It's about putting yeah, up points. This is about points. That's all fantasy I need. Fantasy wise, fantasy wise, he's killing Luck. Um, yeah, speaking of points, Fred, what happened to those Eagles putting up all those points last oh, week? Oh yeah, Fred, what happened, yeah, what happened to that? He's going by this time next week, they ain't scoring mm. at all. Mm. Yeah, you know, if it wasn't for a bad snap, interesting. Donut. Yes, oh. yes, very bad. They scored very, about very forty bad. points minus thirty-five. <laughs> very bad, right, this, very bad. This one right here, I actually have two picks. Dev, staying with you. Let's go with uh, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, Got to take this up to Buffalo. Kiko Alonzo, linebacker. He's leading the league in, in interceptions with four, uh, 81 tackles. Uh, he has a sack. He's, he's creating havoc. He's having a really good season. So yeah. midseason, I'm going to go with Kiko. Frank, who's your pick? Sub I also went with Kiko Alonso. That's that's a little misleading, Dev, because there's like eight players in the league before interceptions. I I actually just looked it up sure. before the game. There's there's like eight people with the hey, same linebacker. amount of interceptions. It's a linebacker. But he's a rookie, and no, none of the other ones are rookies or linebackers. I don't think, except for Sean Lee. But um, I also went with Kiko Alonso. I'm always curious how those Oregon guys translate to the league, and I was uh, uh, happily surprised to see his transition. So uh, yeah, I went with Kiko. Okay, Fred. I have two guys. Uh... Kiko Alonso, obviously, and mm -hmm. Sheldon Richardson. Damn, those are my for the two. Jets. Yeah. Uh, Sheldon Richardson has been a complete animal, and I really, I kind of saw it coming from Missouri, but I just didn't think it would happen this fast. Yeah. that th Those are good picks, and I said I had two guys, and those are my two guys. <laughs> Sheldon Richardson as well as Kiko Alonso. Um, if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick Kiko Alonso because his numbers are just stupid. I mean, he's a linebacker, for Christ's sake. He's four interceptions. I mean, the guy's making tackles all over the field. He's out of control right now. Um, the next the next award will be Offensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, there wasn't too many candidates for this. I'm looking around the league, and I'm like, okay. I'm going to go with Giovanni Bernard. Um, 
you know, he's making an impact with the law firm. He's going to take his job soon if he hasn't already at this point. But uh, I, that's what I'm going to pick for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Let's go to you, Fred. Uh, I got to go with the guy from the national champions, Alabama Crimson Tide. And he's going on to another powerhouse team in the Green Bay Packers, Eddie Lacy. The guy is just – he's picking up where he left off. Uh, I think he's—I think he's feels like he's running against Alabama because that's – I'm sorry, uh, Notre Dame. It just feels like he's running against Notre Dame <laughs> over and over. It's like man tie tail. Um, too bad, too bad he can't get 100 yards. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy has just made an impact on it all for this Packers team. It's just the Packers haven't had a real running game since they won a Super Bowl. And yeah. to make a, that much of an impact that that team has – can keep the heat off of Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers is benefiting that much more. Uh, that's my. That's why I have him as my offensive. Yeah, I mean here. he's playing well, and I thought about picking him, but the injury and also the fact that he can't get 100 yards. Uh, Frank, who's your offensive yeah. rookie of the year? Um, I also took Lacey. I almost took Geno Smith because, like you said, because of the injury, but I ended up going with Lacey. He he runs hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he does. He's a beast. He does. He does. Dev. I took Eddie Lacy as well. He's helping to make a, a one-dimensional offense into a two-dimensional offense. <laughs> uh, four, 446 yards, three touchdowns, even with the injury. You know, yeah. he's leading all rookie rushers. Um, shout out to Giovanni Bernard, though, because, you know, he had to share a lot of the load. Bernard! Like you said, he's, he's <laughs> gradually going to take the law firm spot, but, you know, throughout his tenure so yes. far, he had to share. But law, I'm, law firm keeps cashing those checks, though. Law yeah. firm, Law professional firm, cash, cash check yeah, casher. Yes, he is. He's cashing them check. Yo, defensive player of the year, Dev. Let's stay right with you. Defensive player of the year. This one had a lot of candidates. I went with a simple choice. Uh, Robert Mathis causing Damn havoc. It. <laughs> causing havoc in, in backfields as far as you know, the quarterbacks go. Uh, 11 and a half sacks. I'm going to go with the old head oh, out in Indianapolis. I thought of two people, and that, that's who I ended up picking, but Frank. Now, watch Frank or uh, Fred pick the other one. And he Frank's had his gonna, most meaningful game against Fr Frank's going to pick the other guy, I thought, because Frank's already said his name during this episode. But, Frank, who do you have as defensive player of the year? No, I definitely didn't do it. You think I'm going to pick Sean Lee, but I, that's not who I'm okay. picking. Um, I actually debated two people, and I had uh, Richard Sherman edging that's it. That's a good pick, too. <laughs> edging it. Yeah, that's a good pick, though. I was going to pick Earl Thomas, the same. I mean, two guys, same secondary. I thought they are both worthy, but uh, I ended up going with Sherman. Yeah, the Legion of Boom. Let's pick the whole, let's pick the whole defense. So Seattle, yeah. Seattle secondary for Defensive Player of the Year. Fred, yeah, who do you they have? They tried to get Jared Allen well, at the it, trade deadline. It was very hard, a very hard decision, and you guys said both names. Uh, Earl Thomas and Richard Sherman. I chose Richard Sherman. The guy is just – he's a, a no-fly zone by himself. And he's just he keeps showing it week in and week out. I, yeah. I, I I have to say I had him as a number one, a first overall, a first round pick, and everyone else kept saying, No, he's not, he's not. Well, Real happened? quick, I have a different opinion on Richard Sermon because or in trash talk in general, I think you can trash talk all you want if you can back it up on the field. I know a lot Agreed. of people don't like it. Agree. You can talk all Agreed. the issues you want Agreed. if you can back it up. Agreed. When when, when he's interviewed I, I, though, I actually, you know, watching him talk in interviews is is really making me a fan of dude. I, I, you know, he's a very perspicacious gentleman. Uh, <laughs> how long Yo, did it take you to? Hey, how long did it take you to fit the, uh, look up that word? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are standing in the mirror all day, like, yeah, I'm gonna get this. Yo, here's the thing. Um, I'm gonna. I, I'm I gonna got the word from Richard Sherman. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my pick, which was Mathis, even though Dev said it already. Mathis is playing out of his mind. Um. He destroyed my team when he played him. Uh, it's probably because he cut his facial hair off and he's looking very suspect right now, but he's balling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't, can't trust a black man without facial hair, but nonetheless. He looks like, like, like a molester. He molested an <laughs> offensive Matt lineman. Matt is balling right now. <laughs> Shout out to Beard Gang. Yo, oh, now let's go offensive player of the year. My offensive player of the year is very simple. It's not who everybody thinks I'm going to pick. I'm going to say Drew Brees. Um, Drew Brees right now is playing out of his mind. I don't think he'll win the MVP, but I think he will win Offensive Player of the Year, um, as of right now at least. Fred, who do you have? I'm taking a guy that's a little bit off. He's not he's not your typical, but the difference that he's made on his team, and it's Jamal Charles. Uh, he's really made a big difference for his team. Uh, just everything he does in the run game, in the pass game, uh, he's just and really helping Alex Smith out. And he's just a tough <clears throat> runner. He's tough inside, and he can he'll burn you down the field. He's what Chris Johnson should have been. Got you. Frank, you know, 
Um, I also am going with Drew Brees. Um, I think it, w- it would be a nice race. I mean, I mean, we haven't gotten to MVP yet, but obviously we have an MVP so far. But the race for second for MVP is pretty interesting to me. Yeah. Um, I thought about Jamal Charles picking for this award, but I ended up going with Drew Brees. He's nasty. He's just incredible. Yeah. Definitely is. Dad. I'm just going to go with a chalk <laughs> pick. I'm going to go Megatron right now, man. Uh, yeah. uh, the dude just had 329 yards receiving yeah. in one game. Like, a lot of receivers, a lot of good receivers out there only have, like, 329 yards. <laughs> so, yeah, right now, where is he? Like, 800-something yards receiving, seven touchdowns. Yeah, he's dumb nice. Just, just throwing the ball. Yeah. All right, Dev, let's stick with you. Let's, let's, let's go to the big award. Let's go to the most valuable player. I'm stat man tonight. 2,919 yards, 29 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, 119.4 rating. Um, I'm going to go with Peyton Manning. Um, what he's doing right now is historic. You know, who knows if he's going to keep it up or if the Broncos are going to end up winning the, the Super Bowl. But for right now, like, I don't think anybody's close in, uh, at midseason. Damn, I didn't even realize he had six picks that fast. He had zero like two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> He had like three against the Redskins. <laughs> yeah, Frank. He throws them in bunches once he once he starts throwing. So Frank. before the season started, I thought that Drew Brees was going to win the MVP over Peyton Manning, and I was wrong. It's Peyton Manning. <laughs> <laughs> I was just flat out wrong. Don't I think wrong. it's nice to admit when you when you messed up. You know, made a mistake. Yeah. Peyton yeah. Manning, I'm sorry. El Sheriff, my bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you know, yeah, the, sort, the sort of like sort of like Frank said, you put up sixty right. last week. <laughs> I did say that. Fred. It's hard to go. MVP. It's hard to go against Peyton Manning, and I can't. I'm not gonna lie. Peyton I was Manning. Gonna say you. <laughs> Peyton Manning is just going insane. You, I couldn't put up those kind of numbers in Madden. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, here's my thing. Here's my thing. I've done it's it. Be, it's going. Mm-hmm. It's going to be unanimous. Um, I'm taking Peyton Manning, but yo, I just want to say an honorable mention to Tom Brady because what he's doing with that, <laughs> with that is slot. It? No, listen, what he's doing with that slop out there, he should get a couple votes. Like, yo, he's playing with – I don't even know those guys' names. Like, he's playing with a bunch of junk. And I don't even know how that team two is five. What, what are they now? What are they, five and two, six and two, five, something like that? Five and two. Yeah. So how are they five and two? Two undrafted wide receivers. Now, now, granted, they're playing a bunch of slop as well, but still. like right. We played the we played the, the Saints. We hand, we, we won the, yeah, Jimmy, oh, yeah. Jimmy that's, something, that's something you and Tom Brady have in common. I don't think he knows their names either. <laughs> well, uh, me and Dev were talking about me and Dev were talking about this uh, on our podcast, which is the War Room, which you can find at warroomsports.com. But anyway, um, we were talking about Tom Brady and his seasons in the NFL. Now, of course, the one season stands out of, amongst all his seasons where he just went completely ape shit. But this might be his second best season of his entire career, honestly. With even though, even doing, though it's the worst statistically, yeah, I was going to say statistically he's not doing too well, but. Yeah. You're right. Six, six and two is six and two. Five and two, six and two, whatever they are. See, but I'm not. I'm not surprised. I don't think I'm as impressed as everybody else because, you know, even though they weren't rookies, I, I watched Tom Brady win three Super Bowls with Manny Moe and Jack at wide receiver. So, yeah, you know, yes. I'm not that surprised. This is what he does. You know, Tom Brady's like, you play to win the game. Yeah. Yeah, he I mean, did play with some slot, but this is like slot times too. This is trash trick you got there now. The only player you can you can name off of those Super Bowl winning teams, Deion Branch. He went to hell when he yeah, um, as soon as he left Tom Brady, he was and, trash. And and Troy Brown, who was a, a two way player at one point. So Troy um, Brown did whatever he was told to do. He was <laughs> you, in the parking lot. You call him Jimmy Toby Brown. <laughs> Toby Brown. Toby Brown was a good little. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dev, Dev, give us, Brown. Give, us, give us our games of the week that we're going to discuss this week. It should be three games we're going to go over. Let's get our picks. All right, let's get our picks in for these for the games of the week. Uh, the first game we're going to talk about is Cincinnati at Miami. That's Thursday night football. Uh, Frank, who you got? I took the Dolphins. This is the exact kind of game that the Bengals lose. This, that's the kind of team they are. They're just going to – everybody thinks they're going to win, and that's why they're going to lose. <laughs> Uh, hmm. I I kind of agree with that sentiment, except for the fact that I picked the Cincinnati Bengals, so I'm gonna stick with my <laughs> pick, and I'm gonna go with the Bengals on this one. Uh, Fred, who'd you pick? Uh, I picked the Bengals. Uh, Bryant McKinney might want to sign his papers to get out of Miami and wipe the Johnson's down with them. Damn. 
Uh, well, I, I, I picked the Bengals, and it's funny because when Frank brought that up initially about how you know they lose these type games, I was like, damn, you are correct. <laughs> they lose the games they're supposed to win, but I'm just going to stick with my pick, and I'm just going to stick with the Bengals because the Dolphins suck. All right. <laughs> our, second guess, our second game of the week. We'll stay with you, Jimmy. We're going to go uh, San Diego visiting Washington. Uh, st- Go ahead. Yeah. I'll let you say it. I, San Diego is that same type of team. San Diego is exactly the same type of team, and they should win this game. But, again, I'm going to stick with San Diego because I've watched Washington play every week this season. Yo, they're not good. Yeah. I mean, bottom line, people can say what they want to say about how they finished the season last year, but you forget it was two halves to that season. They're playing just like they played in the beginning of last season. <laughs> but they're just not that good. And RG3, they're just not that good. And, and and that's what you know so when, when I said that at the beginning of the season, you know, you can't be an objective analyst without being a hater, especially if Washington fans know that you root for a team in the division, even though that has nothing to do with my analysis. Um, they're struggling in the pass game. Like struggling. The, the as best player said, the, as on the team right now is Alfred Morris because he's still balling, but they're struggling in the pass game, and it has a whole lot to do with them changing the offense a little bit from last year. Last year, Robert Griffin was kind of coddled, you know, where a lot of his throws were at the line of scrimmage, right in front of the line of scrimmage. This year, they're actually asking him to make big boy throws. And what did Pierre his, mechanics, his mechanics aren't aren't what they need to be to make those throws because he, he makes a lot of throws where he's not planted. You know, he's coming off of making moves, and he's just all over the place with the ball right now. Dev, what did Pierre Garçon say about their offense this past week? He said... If 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 you suck at passing, you just suck at passing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Yo, their Peter best Gassau's, receiver. And Yo, then, Peter just got traded. He just, <laughs> you know, he, there's no way he's on that team next you year. Know, word, coming at the word, king. In the words of Joe Namath, they are struggling. Yeah, so uh, maybe, but see, San Diego is the type of team that they could get it going against because, like we said, San Diego loses the team that they should beat. With that said, I'm picking C- San Diego. Fred, who you got? I'm taking Washington. I don't like it, but I'm taking Washington. Simply put, uh, this is the type of game that San Diego, you, you, you want them to win it. You know they should win it, but they'll they do something to screw it up. Phillip Rivers will throw two or three picks. Their running game isn't all that great. But I do like Keenan Allen, wide receiver for the San Diego Chargers, a guy that came out of Cal, a local guy that really, a rookie that makes an impact on that team and is honestly the only receiver on that team that's pretty good right now. I think he's the only one left. <laughs> yeah, I know. They drop it like flies. Who you got, Frank? Um, I also took the Redskins. I think I put I probably put too much weight into this, but anytime a West Coast team travels to the East Coast for a one o'clock start, that ten AM start in on their time, mm-hmm. um, I always think that's a factor. Um, people need to relax with the RG three thing, I think. Don't use Adrian Peterson as an example. That dude's either on steroids or he's not human or a combination of both. I'm just saying, <laughs> it takes a year to come back from an ACL injury. I agree but with that. But Frank, so just, this is what we tried to tell their fans year. all offseason <laughs> when yeah. they knew because of last year they were going to dominate the division for the next five years. We tried to keep telling people yeah. everybody's not Adrian Peterson. Well, I, I expected, I expected everybody RJ can't come back to struggle. From an ACL that fast and that strong. Everybody can't make six kids at once. Everybody can't do what Adrian Peterson can do. <laughs> hey, Frank. Frank that, that is also assuming that you thought RG3 was good before all this. So, you know, I mean. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I, didn't, I don't think he's a bum or anything. I just think he had a lot to prove in the passing game from last year. You know, you look at his numbers and you saw how high his, his uh, percentage was. But when you're dinking and dunking, you're you're going to have a high percentage, and you're not going to throw interceptions. Now right, that they're allowing that, him to throw the ball mid range, you're starting to see pop rocks you know, and tootsie pops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing with with RG three especially is his biggest advantage is he has a dual threat. You know, he can run mm-hmm. or he can pass, and you know, if he's on one leg, basically nobody's really scared of him running. You know, he he hasn't really had that breakout run like last year. I think it was like an 86-yard run where he just blew past everybody. Yeah. You know? one thing he's starting, he's starting one thing to get I, confidence, though, because he's looking kind of fast. Well, here's my thing. Also, before before RG3, get healthy. 
I hope you have a great and prosperous career, but you got to stop taking hits the way you're taking hits. Yo, get yeah. rid of the football because yeah. you He's are taking a beating right now. And, Jimmy, you alluded to it. I mean, he doesn't really read the field that great. Uh, he It's one read, maybe two, and then it's takeoff, and you can't be like that in the NFL. In college, it yeah. works. In college, yeah, no. at Baylor, it's great because no, there's only one or two defensive backs that can cover that long, and linebackers can't catch it. But in the NFL, yeah. that hmm. is just not going to happen. And Baylor was yeah, like quick more bold. They only had like four plays. Go ahead. Real quick. No, <laughs> Don't no to RG3. If I, if, if I can catch up on my DVR and the time it takes you to throw a pass, you, you, you've you held on too long to the ball. Exactly. You need to stop that. Exactly. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, I like caught up on the walking dead. I was like, watch wow, Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah, All of RG3 uh, still had the ball. The game. Uh, yeah, and, pl- and, and, and it's the, the situation with him is also – um, not just him holding on to the ball, but I, I don't know, man. I, we'll, we'll get back to it because I don't want to waste too much time. We'll get back to that. Um, Baltimore at Cleveland is our last game. Uh, Jimmy, who'd you take, Baltimore or Cleveland? Yo, I changed my pick on this game like four or five times. And and by the way, I am leading our pick and pull right now. I just want to throw that out there. But uh, <laughs> I stuck with Baltimore um, just because I still see Cleveland as Cleveland in my eyes. It's just that simple. All right, and and anybody out here watching, we count. So if one of one of us wins the pick'em pool, we're not giving out a prize. We cheat oh, absolutely, like absolutely not. <laughs> we cheat, Fred. Who you got? I gotta go with the Ravens, man. I just don't trust Jason Campbell whatsoever. Jordan Cameron's a good player. Josh Gordon's a good player. Who else do they have at the skill positions? That's mm-hmm. what I thought. Mm-hmm. Joe Flacco, Bernard Pierce. Uh, you just Tory Smith out there. These guys, can, these guys are just gonna try to run the football down these guys' throats. Let's hope. <laughs> let's hope they do that. You know how the Ravens are when they're supposed to run the football down. Yes, throat, yes, they want to throw the ball vertically. Throw the ball Sixty times. They just they play double reverse psychology. They think we're going to run the ball. So <laughs> but I gotta take the Ravens. I gotta take the Ravens mainly defensively. This team is still they're still the Ravens even without Ray Lewis. And you can tell there's a huge drop off without Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, both from the U. But <laughs> I'm gonna put it out there. <laughs> but uh, yeah. you still got you have you have Mr. Ball so hard out there and Terrell so making a huge impact. And this team defensively, they're just gonna handle these guys. Okay. Yeah. You definitely want to throw that out there because neither one of them dudes are on the team anymore. So they <laughs> so they didn't really matter. But, <laughs> Ultra relevant. But, but I get your point. He had a um, way to say it. Let's see if he's talking to you after this weekend. <laughs> and the Ravens go deep more than any team ever. Like They Why? throw the ball deep at least once per yeah. possession. Frank, who you got? Yeah, we'll see what Fred has to say when James Winston has like three Miami freshmen you know, in, in the bus on the way back. But anyways, oh. Uh, oh. I've, I've been saying this since the preseason. Um, even though Brian Horry impressed me and I didn't know how good he was, I'll admit that. Jason Campbell is the best quarterback on the Cleveland Browns roster. I, I like Jason Campbell. I think he's an NFL quarterback, and with their defense, you just need somebody that's competent at the position. I got the Browns. I, I think they're a better team than the Ravens. Yeah, Jason Campbell's never gotten a fair shake. Never, never. Going he back to college, the dude has had a new offensive coordinator like every yeah, year. Yeah, every life. single year, yes. <laughs> yes. Every single year no, of his no life. No continuity at all. So I feel sorry for him, and I'm still going to go with the Baltimore Ravens. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it back to you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So those, those are our games of the week. Let us know what you think about those games and who do you have in those games. And also, give us your opinion in terms of um, offensive, defensive rookie of the year, coach of the year, MVP. Um, just all the awards that we covered during the course of this episode. Gentlemen, uh, before we get out of here, Frank, tell everybody how they can you know read you guys' writing and see what you got going on. Uh, real simple, just hit sports-kings.com. Don't forget the dash. Um, we got baseball, football, basketball starting up, pass the pill. Watch out for court vision, war room sports, okay. sports-kings. Let's do it. All right. And, Fred, how can anybody get a hold of you and, and read your writing and everything you've got going on? You guys can reach me at heavyinthegames.com as well as you can visit me on Twitter. I'm always talking college football on Twitter at fpredusesports and at Heavy in the game. That's yeah, right. let's see what Let's see if he's talking. Yeah, let's see if he's talking. Every, everybody <laughs> go to him on Saturday and see if he's talking when his Hurricanes play Florida State, if you don't know what we're talking about. Dev. I was about to say, or you could just peek your head into the weight room down at the U. He might be in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> so disrespectful. 
right. Anyway, I've, seen the, I've seen the, the, the famous weight room, though, uh, Fred. It's, it's, it's a nice facility. Yeah, um, if you separate those U's, you get two L's. Ooh, oh, this is nice L's. Did you pick the Steelers last week? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did Wait, what? Didn't you pick the Steelers last week? Uh-oh. Yeah, I did pick the Steelers. That's Uh-oh. true. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. We, we're going to talk about that, Steelers. Fred. You did say the Eagles would still be scoring yeah. by this time. Hey, I'm sorry. 93-yard touchdown by a quarterback. Never happened ever in Yo, you thought the Eagles were still going to be scoring on Wednesday? They stopped scoring on Saturday. They stopped scoring. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hey, we hey, didn't Fred, know don't worry about that, man. They needed Nick Foles. Don't worry. By the way, listen, <laughs> I just want to say one thing. How come no one gave Terrell Pryor a vote for offensive rookie of the year? Because he's not an off- he's not a rookie. Because he, he played last year. He's not a rookie. He's in the league for years. You know what I'm saying? He played. He played last. How much? Did, how much did he play last year, though? He played a little bit last year. Could we Blake Griffin? Do you qualify? Could I don't know. Blake, do you? I don't know. It caused the Blake <laughs> Griffin rule. You know how to play the Blake Griffin. <laughs> yeah, Nike. Like you said on our court vision, Nike cut the check on that. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so we, cut the we, check. Couldn't, we couldn't Blake Griffin him because he doesn't have any. It doesn't matter because I wouldn't have voted for him anyway. Yeah, he doesn't have I a sponsor have like that. I wouldn't have voted for him. He had 88 yards passing last week. Yo, we had can't throw, so you have to throw he had a 93 yard run though. It's all about winning, man. <laughs> winning. Anyway, everybody, yeah. give us your opinion. Let us know what's the, what's going on. Should uh, Terrell Pryor be eligible under the Blake Griffin rule? <laughs> who are you giving your who are you giving your awards to? Who's gonna win this week? And as we always say, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance. We'll see you chumps on top. The wait is the war room with five nights at the round table. Five Philly guys, the first of five and